Hi everybody, Miss Roberts here for book 33, Narwhal on a Sunny Day. Now we are just reading chapters one and two today, and then we'll read chapters. Th we'll read this book throughout the week, and then we'll read our last book next Monday, just to make sure we all remember the plan. But I didn't get a chance to read the um, summary before we start. Well, it's kind of like, it's not necessarily a summer, and I know I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent, but it's like a preview. It's like the idea of what we're going to be reading first. Danger on the ice. The magic tree house whisks Jack and Annie to Greenland. They're not sure what time they landed, but they do know this. There's a narwhal in trouble, and they need to save it. With the help of a young hunter called Erickson, the narwhal is saved, but Jack and Annie are still in Greenland. If saving the narwhal is in their mission, then maybe it then if um, saving the narwhal is not their mission, then what is? Maybe Erickson can help them find out. Discover Arctic animals and new friendships in this heartwarming edition of the Magic Treehouse series. Book thirty three. Can you believe we've read thirty three books? Well, we've read thirty two. This is thirty three. Chapter 1, Green Land. Jack and Annie sat on the porch in the warm summer twilight. Jack was reading a library book called Amazing Facts. Get this, he said. A beehive can have as many as 60 million bees in it. Is that all, Annie said? Ha, huh, said Jack. Okay, then get this, he read. Some experts say there might be a 10 billion trillion stars in the universe. Wrong, said Annie. In fact, there are 10 billion trillion and 73. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. How they're going back and forth. I think it's funny. Jack laughed. They both looked up at the dark blue sky. The stars were coming out. Seriously, 10 billion trillion, said Annie. I can't even imagine it. She stood up. Hey, do you see that? What? said Jack. It's at that tiny little cloud. Annie said. Where? said Jack. Standing over the treetop, said Annie. Oh man, whispered Jack. He saw it too. A small, brightly glowing cloud over the Frog Creek Woods. We'd better check it out, said Annie. Jack put his book on the porch chair. Mom, Dad, he called through the screen door. We'll be back soon. Fifteen minutes, their dad called. We'll w watch a movie together. Great, said Jack. He grabbed his backpack and then turned to Annie. Let's go. Hurry. Jack and Annie dashed down the porch steps. They tore across their yard and landed on the side and headed up the sidewalk. When they came to the Frog Creek Woods, they crossed the street and hurried between the trees. The darkening woods were filled with sounds of crickets and frogs. The air smelled of warm green leaves and wood and earth. Soon, Jack and Annie came to the tallest oak. Hooray, said Annie. The magic treehouse was back. It was shimmering against the evening sky. Yes, said Jack. He grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Annie followed. They climbed into the treehouse. Look, said Jack. In the la last light of the day, he saw a book on the floor. He grabbed the book. He read the title on the plain green cover. Greenland, the world's largest island. Greenland, said Annie. That sounds nice. Yeah, our teacher told us about Greenland, said Jack, but I don't remember what he said. Open the book, said Annie. Jack opened the book. He found a map in a pocket of the inside cover. It, he took it out and unfolded it. Everything was black and white except for Greenland. The huge island was the color green. Green land sounds so beautiful, said Annie, like it's filled with green grass and green trees. Don't be fooled. It can't be very green, said Jack. Why not, said Annie, because look, with his finger, Jack traced a circle on the map. This is the Arctic Circle. Inside the circle is most of Greenland, Norway, Iceland, and parts of Canada and Russia. It's one of the coldest regions in the world. Oh, then why is the island called Greenland, asked Annie. Jack shrugged, and why are we going there, he said. Do you see anything from Morgan? They looked around the treehouse. Here, said Annie. She picked up the small piece of yellow paper. She read aloud, On your next journey, you will land on the shore of an island with icebergs, reindeer, and more. 
on a day that seems endless with no dark of night. Travel through fog, travel through light. Explore different worlds, show friends where to go. Unite all these worlds with a word that will glow. No dark of night, said Jack. What does that mean? I don't know, said Annie. And what about and unite all these worlds with a word that will glow? Yeah, what word, said Jack. It sounds really cold with icebergs, reindeer, and more. But that could be fun, said Annie. We can handle cold. Remember our trip to the Arctic a while ago? Oh, right, said Jack. We wore the polar bear masks. And saved the baby bears, said Annie. That was fun, right? Yeah, it was, said Jack. Okay, back to the cold. Annie pointed at the Greenland at Greenland on their map. I wish we could go there, she said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. And then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 2. Ice Sunlight shone through the treehouse window. The sounds of splashing water came from the outside. Hey, it doesn't feel that cold, said Annie. Maybe because we're wearing these heavy woolen clothes, said Jack. Their summer clothes had changed into wool outfits. Now they had on thick wool coats, wool shirts, wool caps, wool mittens, and wool pants. Even Jack's backpack was changed into a wool bag. His notebook and pencil were inside. You were right, said Annie, looking out the window. I don't see much green here. Jack looked out with her. The treehouse had landed on the rocky shore of the ocean bay. Across the water were brown mountains and a, with yellow-white peaks. The air felt crisp and clean. Seagulls swooped, over, swooped low over the sparkling blue sea water. The sun shined on the sheets of ice. Ready to explore, said Annie? Yep, said Jack. Jack slipped the map back inside the Greenland book. He put the book and Morgan's rhyme in the wool bag. Then he and Annie climbed out of the window. They stepped onto the pebble shore. Oh man, ice everywhere, said Jack. The ocean bay was filled with ice. Small flat icebergs were floating in the middle of the bay. Others were close to shore. The water must be Freezing, said Annie. Jack took off a glove and dipped his hand into the seawater. Ow, he yelped. It's so cold, it hurts. Jack dried his hand and put his glove back on. Then he took out the Greenland book. He read aloud from the first page. For millions of years, Greenland has been mostly covered with ice. In the 21st century, experts worry that the world's climate is warming and that ice is melting. Scientists from different countries live at research stations in Greenland to study the effects of climate change. Now I remember what my teacher told us, said Jack. Melting ice in the Arctic can cause sea levels to rise and lead to disaster. That's serious, said Annie. I hope we meet some scientists. Me too, said Jack. I wonder who else lives here. He found a section of the book called People of Greenland. He read, Experts believe that the first people that occupied Greenland about 4,500 years ago Today, oh, that's when they joined, That's when they were on Greenland. Today, 56,000 people live on the island. Most of them are known as Inuit. Inuit, said Annie, like the Inuit seal hunters we met in the other Arctic trip. He was great. Yeah, but I don't see any signs of the Inuit people in this area, said Jack. He looked around at the cold, barren landscape. It feels pretty lonely. Wait, look at that said Annie. She pointed to the group of small silver gray creatures resting on the icebergs. I think those are seals, said Jack. But they're so little and cute, said Annie. Jack found a chapter on seals in the book. He read, Greenland has three kinds of ice seals. Ringed seals are the smallest. Okay, they must be ringed seals, said Jack. Suddenly, the seals let out a high, high-pitched barks. They spun their heads from side to side, and then they slipped off the ice and disappeared into the water. I think we scared them, said Jack. Swooshing came, sound came from across the bay. Not us, cried Annie. A whale. A huge gray whale was skimming across the water. And here's a picture of the seals. A sharp burst of air spurt out of the blowtop and the top of its head. Whoa, said Jack. 
The whale leapt into the air. Then it crashed down with a giant splash. It dove under the sea. A humpback. That was a humpback, said Annie. I saw the bump on its back. Humpback whales sing. They sing a different song every year. How do you know that, said Jack. I love whales. I wrote a report on them, said Annie. Great, said Jack. He looked up whales in the index of their book. He found the right page and read aloud. Greenland's waters are filled with whales. Fifteen different kinds of whales can be seen along its coasts and in its ocean inlets. They include humpback whales, orcas, narwhals, beluga whales. Wait, more whales? cried Annie. A bunch more? I know, said Jack, not looking for up from the book. There are fifteen kinds. He kept reading. Fin whales, blue whales. Stop! I mean more in real life, shouted Annie. Look up, Jack. Jack looked up. He couldn't believe his eyes. About a dozen whales were swimming in the bay now. They had sleek gray backs. Each had a long tusk jutting from its rounded head. Narwhals, shouted Annie. Real narwhals. So exciting. But that is the end of chapter two. So we will have to find out what happens with Annie and the narwhals in chapters three and four tomorrow. I hope you had a wonderful Monday. I had a pretty good one because I got to see a lot of your smiling faces. So I hope you have a, um, a great rest of your evening and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.